Welcome to Try Not to Overthink It, where we explore the intricate landscape of mental health, well-being, and everyday day life. I'm RJ. Unique. And I'm Khalil. Join us as we dive into insightful conversations, share expert perspectives, and personal stories that shed light on the various dimensions of mental wellness. Rather, you're seeking guidance, inspiration, or a deeper understanding of the human mind. This podcast is a safe space to engage, learn, and navigate the journey to a happier, healthier you. Today, we are going to be talking about the subject of being equally yoked. So the biblical metaphor refers to the idea of finding compatibility and shared values in a partnership. Rather, it's dating, marriage, or even friendship. In today's episode, we'll explore what it means to be equally yoked, the importance of aligning your values with your partner, and how it can lead to a stronger and more fulfilling relationship. Rather you're curious about this concept from a religious perspective or just seeking insight into building a harmonious connection with your partner, you're in the right place. So for me, when it comes to things like such as being equally yoked, I think that is exceedingly important. Um, We live in a day and age now where you hear a lot of people talk about that, about value and what you bring to the table and X, Y, and Z. And I listened to um, the Joe Budden podcast, I want to say earlier this week. And they were talking about uh, Melissa Ford brought up the fact of Tyler Perry's advice for African-American women in dating and about how, you know, traditionally men make more money. But nowadays you have more African-American women making more money and that as as a woman, you should be okay with a man just being able to afford paying for the light bill. As long as he loves you and he respects you and he values the relationship and the house, you should be okay with him being able to pick up the dinner every once in a while. And I mean, I for me as a man. Tyler Perry did. Tyler Perry said that. Because Tyler Perry made more money than a lot of men in a lot of different households. Exactly. And so that's what I, I like. I, 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 I just, Tyler in, Perry makes more money combined than a lot of men in a lot of different households. In, in, in spirit, the I men, understand where it's coming from. Everybody I, he makes more money. <laughs> in spirit, I understood where he was coming from, but it's easy for him to say that, like you said, when you're when you're speaking from a place of I have overabundance. But as a person, I can tell you, um, as a person that has done a lot of physical exercise, I like to work out, I like to be in shape. You know, rowing a boat is very difficult. I don't like if you if, if you've never if if you've ever done it with a team, it is very difficult to row a whole boat by yourself. And I mean, when to me, when I hear there, things, when it's just your own it, weight, then it's easier. Yeah. But when you're having to take care of a whole nother person, it definitely becomes a labor. Right. And I mean, yes, you know, for me, when I, you know, I've said this on here several times, when it comes to relationship, there is no 50, 50, I believe in a hundred, a hundred, because there's going to be days where I ain't got, I ain't even got 50%. I might have 15 or 25%, but that's when for me as a man, with my partner, I might sit down and have that conversation with her and say, hey, notice I said partner, you know, because again, <laughs> relationships is a partnership. I'm going to have that conversation with my partner and say, hey, I ain't got it. You know, hey, I just, I, this is how much I have. And this is what I need you to, you know, kind of pick up on and vice versa. When she ain't got it, I got to be able to do the same thing. But that's where for me as a man, being equally yoked comes from is the fact that when I don't have it, I know she does. When she doesn't have it, she can count on me to have it. And we uplift each other and we push each other and we motivate each other and we take care of each other. We pour into each other. What do you guys think? Well, Beyonce said, who wants the perfect love story anyway? Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) She did double up on it anyway. She doubled up on it anyway. She She did. She she said, who wants the perfect love story? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um... Uh, I hear what Tyler Perry is saying, but I don't think it is just you should be happy with. I think that that's the wrong way to go about it. I think the, and maybe because I didn't hear it, so I don't understand the context in which the comment was made. Um, But I think being able to create a space where both of you are striving towards discussed goals is what's important. I mean, if both of you guys Mm -hmm. are content with burning through savings, then you're equally yoked. If you're both Mm -hmm. okay with depravity, hey, we are we are in these trenches together. Um, Mm -hmm. One of you cannot decide to be moving on up like the Jeffersons, and the other one is trying to be in the trenches in the trap house. 
it's just not gonna work. Mm-hmm. So I think as mm-hmm. long as you both have sameness of destination, then you can get there. And I don't think it's one person doing it versus the other. I was listening to a Netflix series and the husband made substantially more than the wife. But the wife was a brown woman. And so, you know, what we brown and black girls, we were taught independence and don't ever let nobody take care of you. You better be able to hold your own, no matter who it is, right? Um, and so she would tell her husband, I want to go 50-50. And he's just like, but your 50 and my 50 are two different 50s. Right. And mm-hmm. so the the finance coach said, why don't you guys do a percentage of your income? You both give a percentage amount of an agreed up percentage amount of your income. And I think he was like, he can comfortably do 60 and she could comfortably do 40. He said, so now you've made you've made up the difference. No, those amounts are not equal and they never will be because let's just say she was making a hundred dollars and he was making a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars. It it was that big of a gap between he's just like, I want to take care of my woman, but she won't let me. And so I think there are times when you have to look at um, what are we doing? My mom would always say fairness isn't everybody getting the same thing. Fairness is everybody getting what they deserve. And so when we talk about mm-hmm. these food yoke, and well, I did this yesterday. You don't do the dishes for me. You do the dishes because we don't want to live in a dirty house. Like our goal is to have a clean house. You don't wash clothes because, well, I wash the clothes, you do this. You don't break down the chores that way. We break it down at what needs to be done. Who's the most qualified to Mm -hmm. do it? Who has the most resources to get it done? Whether it's energy, whether it's know-how. In my house, Uh, time. We break down now. We break down our bills. And and force, and so we don't pay. Technically, we don't put any money to any bill. We just have every check that we get. We take out a percentage of money. We put it in that account. It's not well. I paid this this month. You paid that. No, we all pay all of it. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes, some someone's check comes in there before the other person's check, and so it might look like well, I paid this. I covered that. But all of the money goes to that one account. So whenever it comes out, it was still all of our potted money. It's not like I can tell well, I put this and you put that. Nope. It's just all that money. So I think when it comes to relationships, being able to see it like that, where it's not energy being matched, but it is deciding what the goal is and what you're going to do to get towards the goal. Right. And I wholeheartedly agree with that because, uh, you know, recently be, being remarried, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I started to understand that concept of being evenly yoked. Let's let's put it in context. Right. Apostle Paul is talking to some believers in the Corinthians. Uh, and when he's. Yeah. But when he's talking to him, he's using the example of oxen. Right. So they mm-hmm. would yoke the two necks together. And they would pull and do the work, right? So the work that they might be doing is a heavy, strenuous load. So if you got two oxen, you should be doing that load because they should both be of even strength and they should be pulling the wagon or uh, tilling the field, whatever they're doing, they should both be putting their strength to it. Now, if one oxen is sick, for the same I'm going to take a step further. You don't even have to be of the same strength. It has to be of same same goal. The, the yoke is yeah, right. shared, shared, sh- shared, shared purpose. You guys are moving yeah, in the, the same direction the, at the same time. Mm-hmm. The yoke is and, the and, actual equalizer. Right. And so what I was going to say, even if one is sick, all right, regardless, they're still going straight forward for the same goal. All mm-hmm. right. It might not be able to carry the same amount, but they're still going forward. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so obviously if one didn't want to do the work, right? If one oxen was stubborn like a donkey and it was trying to go the opposite way or to the left, to the right, that would definitely be something that's unevenly yoked, right? Mm-hmm. Because their strength is not being focused on the same goal that yours is, right? Oh. So that's what I've learned in my second marriage, right? It's not in, in uh, my wife, she makes more than me, 
right? Uh, we it's pretty close. But she makes adopted? a little more than me. Are y'all adopted? Yeah. Then she's. I'll come live. With I couldn't you. hear you. Are you guys adopted? No. I'll I'll pay my bills. Y'all can adopt me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we adopted. No, we adopted. Uh, we already got kids. Uh, <laughs> We're so, trying to find like, what, what some we, hots in a cot. What we decided to do, right, is myself, I'll pay a certain percentage, like you were talking about earlier, to cover, you know, how much I make. It's a certain percentage, and she pays a certain percentage. Hers might be a tad bit more, just a little bit more, because she makes a little more. But regardless, uh, we've learned, especially since I, uh, this is my second marriage, I've learned that all of our money, We'll go to the bills. We'll go to taking care of the household, go to the children. It's not mine versus hers. Um, that's one thing I had to get out of my mind. I went to a marriage counselor mm -hmm. and we've been working as a unit, as mm -hmm. a whole. We have five year goals, financial goals, even in our jobs. Right. I don't know if I'm going to be at this same job forever. So me and hers talk about, well, hey, if, if you need to start putting in applications, I'll have to do some overtime or something like that if you want to work part time. And so you can try to start your own business next year, whatever you want to do, because it's ours. It's no longer just mine. I can't have certain like, yes, you can have some individual goals, but with, with my family, we need to be all on the same page. Everybody in my household needs to be on the same page. And I think people get married. Uh, it's like, well, you know, two separate entities single. coming together. Yeah, and they're playing like their signal Sing, single. That's that's not it. It's these entities have to come together. You're one flesh. You guys can't do that separation. Yeah, you could have some personal goals like you. I won't work out every day. My partner don't. But you know, still, you should be able to come together on your mutual goals and agree upon what you want to do in the next five to ten to fifteen years. What both of you guys spoke to was what I said earlier about about a partnership. There's conversations that occur. It's not we're moving individually and expecting things to work out for the betterment of both of us. There's a conversation that occurs, regardless of how big or how small it is, that is what pulls you guys and ensures that you guys are on the same page, reading from the same song, the same book, singing in the same key and the same pitch. You know, where we get it twisted about being equally yoked is someone's got to lead, someone's got to follow. No, sometimes... Somebody does have to lead. Somebody does have to follow. But in most times, all when the it time. comes, all well, the I, wouldn't time. Say, I wouldn't say all the time. Um, well, I wouldn't I mean, say all the time because you have to have a leader. A leader doesn't mean a dictator, right? When right. we hear the word leader, we hear this person is making all the decisions. That's a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. That's not leadership. That's so not, yeah. if the person says, you talk about this, Raj, all the time with being in the military. There's a point, man, who when the buck stops, it stops with them. Where if people die, there's got to be somebody to blame. If you guys are right, it's it's a layer of accountability mm -hmm. for somebody to be that person. It doesn't mean that this person who was chosen gets to just bully everybody else into doing it their way. Right. No, they are responsible for making sure that the team is well provided for, well cared for, and safe in the military. So everybody's going to be safe. If you are the leader of your home, that job relies on you to say, I am entrusting you to make sure that we are safe. If you are the leader and you say, I'm not good with finances, but I'm entrusting you to, to make sure that the bills are paid, I will provide any resources that I need or that you might need to pay the bills. Because maybe the wife is better, or whatever the partnership, maybe the other partner is best with paying mm -hmm. the bills. But I'm entrusting you as the leader to let me know what you need so you can do this at optimal, at an optimal stance. But it's still a leader and a follower because they're following your leadership to say, hey, I'm, trust, I'm trusting that this is what's going to be best for us. Right. I'm yeah. trusting that this is going to work out in this way. I'm trusting that he's going to give me the resources. If he's going to put me in charge of it or, or if this is where, what I'm going to handle, hey, I'm trusting that he's always going to have the money in that account when it's time to hit pay on them bills. When that auto account rings, he's going to have that money there, right? But, so, right. but even to take it a step further, 
with the trust, the, the trust is also reciprocal because the same way that you have to trust that the money's going to be in the account, I have to be able to trust that you're going to do what with the money, yeah. what you're supposed to be doing right. with the money. Yeah. And that's yeah. where I think that when it, when, when you enter into a serious relationship with somebody, like when we start talking about who's, who's doing what and who's good at what, when you enter into a serious relationship with somebody, this is where like we, we have these conversations about dating. You mm -hmm. sit down when you're dating and you're courting somebody, you're going through the courtship process. This is where you discover who's good at what. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be things that as a man, I'm not good at. There's going to be things as a woman, you're not going to be good at. And there's going to be things that you're great at. And there's going to be things that I'm great at. So part of being in a partnership is, and I tell this to people all the time, when you are part of a team, we play into each other's strengths and we play mm -hmm. out of each other's weaknesses. You'd be a good and God dang on fool to know that someone is, is sucks at finances and right. let them be let the person to pay the bills. The You'd yeah, be an idiot. You That's homeless. on you at that point. You want to be homeless. Right. You want to be homeless. You want to be homeless. You want to have no lights on. You want to have no phone. You want to have no food. That's on well, you at that point. Well, RJ, that's that's what happens to people, right? Okay. And people get upset. Um, uh, prime story, prime example. My mother, uh, my husband, uh, her husband, my dad was always um, very flashy, running around, spending a lot of money. Well, she grew up in an old school environment, so. When, you know, she worked a part time job, uh, my dad worked a full time job, all the money went in his hand. He paid the bills. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when she told me this story, I was like, yeah, I was like, uh, you, you fell for she that one. Listen, she had a metal jar in the kitchen. You know how them older women used to have metal jars like, in the kitchen with well, look, the, the coffee can. She had a coffee well, can. She, she tried to stash some money. All right. Oh. But the more he was, uh, susceptible to, uh, um, being, you know, caught in the uh, substance abuse lifestyle. He, he got on drugs. All right. Yeah. She would check the bills. She would, she would go behind him and he wouldn't have paid the bills, mm -hmm. but she gave him all the money. So <laughs> at that part, at that point, she said, Hey, I got to stop this. She's like, he can't handle the finances. And she knew that his addiction had gotten out of control. So she pulled that power from him. But for a while, like she said, that was how she was raised, that mm -hmm. I'm going to give this man control of the finances because he's supposed to be better in finances. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? But that's not the truth. Just because I'm a man doesn't mean that my financial mind is better mm -hmm. than my wife or, no. or, or I'm better at paying bills on time or whatever the case is, right? Because uh, uh, if my wife's a mathematician, Right. And, and, and uh, I'm a construction worker, not knocking because I worked construction before. Right. Not knocking a construction worker, but I'm probably going to tell her, hey, you might be better with handling the finances, playing into people's strengths. You get what I'm saying? If your wife, if your now, husband's an engineer. Now, I'm going to say this. Just because your spouse is better at it does not give you permission not to learn about it. Because in a partnership, right, exactly. though I might be the best one for the job, in the event that something happens to me, you need to know, because we're a team, you I need, need to, to be able to pick it, it up seamlessly. You need to know all of the passwords to all of the accounts. You need yes. to know how much we pay. When is it due? Um, it's the, and I mean, I set everything up on auto pay. I can only speak for myself. I'm an auto pay girl. <laughs> Right. I don't like having to remember all them dates. And I have them in my calendar. Like, it rolls. It sends me alerts in my calendar. Yeah. But I just like it on auto pay. Everybody get their money and got to worry about it. But my husband knows that, too. So I put it, right. I put all of the dates that things are due on the family calendar. I make sure my password, he has access to it. He can just unlock my phone. If you don't need it, if he doesn't know it, he can unlock the phone. Everything is there. He can unlock my computer. Everything is there. Our important paperwork. He knows where every important document is. Does he ask me for it every single time? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, right. <laughs> I ask my wife, hey, where all my marriage certificates, you know, this and that. I have to ask. He knows, like, where'd you put it? He knows where it is. Right. But see, you you spoke to something. I remember I was uh, I was talking to this young lady one time, and she was asking me. She has has this thing where she was interviewing me and asking me these questions. And, and so mm -hmm. um, she's asking me one of the questions. So she was like, if I make more money than you, how would you feel about it? And I was like, okay. I wouldn't care. And so she was like, you wouldn't? And I was like, nah. 
And she's like, you know, like explain that. She said, because a lot of guys, when you, as a woman, you make more money than they feel some kind of way. I said, I wouldn't feel no type of way. And the reason I wouldn't feel no type of way is because again, my, my thought process is different. You make more money than me. I need to know what I can do to, to get to that point. I can learn something from you in that regard, especially right. if you're not working a standard nine to five, you're, you're working, you're in business for yourself. You're an entrepreneur. Like there's something that can be learned there. And like you, you, you said something that, that resonated with me of just because you, you are not good at it doesn't mean that you shouldn't take the time to learn it. Right. It's, it's important that when, as a, and I keep going back to this about, about this being a partnership, that is what is, that's what it means to be equally yoked is this, we mm -hmm. operate together. We may not always yeah. see eye to eye. We may not always agree all the time, but ultimately everything, everything that we do, every move that we make, every decision that is reached is for the betterment of our overall union and our relationship. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when you are working together, it hits different when you know that somebody is always going to either, if they don't have the answer, they're going to find the answer or they're going to provide you with what you need. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just hits different to have that, to have that confidence to know that your partner is, is always going to cover down on you, even if you don't have it. And then vice versa, that you can cover down on them when they don't have it. And I think that is very important that for us, when you are in a relationship with somebody, the things that you don't know, you learn. That's where, like, for me, like when we had the live about relationships, I said that, I said that, you know, was, I can't remember which question it was, but that was my answer is you never stop learning when you're in a relationship. Yes, the moment you, you stop can. learning, the, the mo the, that's when your relationship is dying. It's I'm trying to learn as much as I can about my partner. I'm trying to learn as much as I can in order to be the best, the best partner I can be. I'm trying to learn everything I can to make sure that my relationship thrives and grows and flourishes. But the only way that happens is if I put my pride aside. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm willing to, to put forth the, put forth the work and put forth the effort. And I think right. that mm -hmm. for a lot of us, you know, cause I can only speak for me cause I, I'm a man. I've only ever been a man. I've never <laughs> been a woman before, but as a man, we tend you have to have that we, option though. And, you have that option. If you'd like to, <laughs> it's a new world. That, that, yeah, that yeah. is true. It's a whole new world. But for, for, <laughs> for me as a man, I can tell you that a lot of times there have been opportunities that I have lost out on or situations that have been closed to me because my pride and my ego got in the way. Right. Right. And, and, and once I stopped allowing my pride and my ego to lead me and I was willing to be coached and I was willing to learn and I was willing to shut the hell up sometimes, <laughs> you know, you'd be surprised how many opportunities come your way when you can do those three things. So I, I, I definitely think that for a lot of us, like you said, unique, being willing to 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 learn the things that we're deficient in, because eventually at some point in time, your partner needs to be able to know that if push comes to shove, if you like, say you like you use yourself, if you're ever sick or you're ever indisposed or not able to take care of something, your husband can still operate as though you were there anyway. It's already handled. Yep. And if it's not already handled, yep. he knows where to find the things in order to get it handled. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, that's a partnership. I, that's a partnership. I just told my mom this today. She was like, I'm going out of town for a conference and our child and my husband will be staying here. And so I was discussing like, well, where the, where the, my, our daughter's going to live or not live, but where she's going to stay while I'm gone because my husband goes to work really early. And she's like, well, yeah, that's just a mama's job to know all of those things. I said, no, that's not a mama's job. That's a parent's job to know where those things are. That's mm -hmm. both of our job to talk Facts. about where our child will be and who's going to care for our child and how that's going to affect our household. And she was just like, well, yeah, I said, yeah, no, nah, that's how you guys did it back in the 80s and the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then marriages, people were burned out. Wives were overwhelmed. Wives yep. were driving their kids off mm -hmm. bridges because they were tired. I was just like, no, I didn't. Yeah, burnt out. You know, you don't have that baby by yourself. And so I'm not going to be the sole one who thinks of all of the details surrounding said child either. Now, does that mean I do something differently for my husband? Yeah, because we look at different needs. We look at the needs of our daughter a lot differently. I might be like, she needs her hair redone. 
you know, those pants are getting a little too short. Like, I need to go buy the girl some new pants. He's like, oh, them things are fine, right? Because just how he views things. But when it comes to, she's in um, martial arts now. He's like, no, she needs discipline. She needs to know self-defense. So he put her in martial arts. Me? I was like, put the girl in sewing. He's like, nah, we're not doing sewing. We're going to do martial arts this year. But I said, it's just different viewpoints of her needs. But both of them, all of her needs are getting met from different vantages. And so sometimes we'll get together and talk right. about just the needs of the kid. Like, we'll just talk about, okay, does she need clothes? Does she need this? Does she need that? How is school going? And so we'll go through every area of her life to see what's what. But that traditionally, that wasn't something that was thought of to be the husband's role. If right. she gets sick, well, now, granted, now, I work from home, so I care for her if she gets sick. But nowadays, there's so many husbands who are stay-at-home dads or, or they work from home like Unique does, and they have to be a part of their family. I mean, there's no way. What are you going to just work, stay in your office and ignore everybody? Mm -hmm. uh, you're not at the, the office anymore. Your office is at home. You mm -hmm. have to be a part. The, today's family is a lot different than the 60s, 70s, and 80s. This mm -hmm. new way of doing things, uh, you need a partnership. You need two heads are always better than one. You need another person to come up with some good ideas. Not saying that the single parent can't do it, but it's stressful. You need yeah. to have two people. Kids need to have both parents, even if they're not in the same household. You need to have both parents, uh, parenting, co-parenting. You need that in a family. So when uh, you were talking earlier about, uh, you know, it, it's more of a dictatorship if one person's just running the whole show, right? That, that brings me back to people thinking, well, it, the men have to be in charge and they have to do... I let my wife do a lot of things to help me out because I would be burnt out if I had to mm -hmm. do every single thing in Listen. this house. Because I do a lot of housework around the house. I do a lot of housework. Cut the grass. Then you got to uh, edge the grass. <laughs> Anything go wrong in the house. Dishwasher is messing up. So you got to go look at that. All right. So she has to help me out. I'll be overwhelmed. Cars. I mean, yeah. You got to take it in for service or you fix it yourself. That's overwhelming for any one person to do, uh, male or female. So we are supposed to come together. I don't understand why people uh, don't understand. That's so what can we're talking about. Can you say, right? Because I, I think being overall, we agree that being equally yoked is ideal. But is it possible to, like, in the scheme of things, like if we like five out of seven were yoked? Is it possible to have certain areas where you are unequally yoked in like smaller subsections so, of your life? I think well, that, let's talk I th about I, the original topic. Go ahead, RJ. I, I think that there are gonna there there are gonna be parts of your life where you guys are unequally yoked. There there mm -hmm. are. Um mm -hmm. but for the grand scheme of your relationship to thrive you guys got to be operating at the same points because mm -hmm. if you're not growing right. together. Eventually somebody's either going to outgrow the other person or you grow apart. And I feel like that's mm -hmm. where marriages, that's where marriages come to an end. Right. Mm -hmm. When you look at mm -hmm. these marriages that happen where infidelity occurs or unknown, unrecon unreconcilable differences occur or arise. Normally there's an unmet need that, that, that was, that was occurring or established. And because we weren't at the same point at the same time, reading from the same music, doing the same dance, you know, guess mm -hmm. what? We grew apart. Mm -hmm. And then when we grew apart, you know, for those people who were unfaithful, guess what? Somebody grew in that spot. Mm -hmm. And so for, for us, that's where, like I said, I always come back as a, as a, as a therapist, and this is not just me being a therapist, but this is where communication is key. Yep. You know, yes, there are going to be points where I am going to be far and exceedingly better than you at whatever it is. And then vice versa, there's going to be things that you are head and shoulders better than me at. But again, having that conversation to ensure that your needs are being met, my needs are being met, that we're constantly staying tapped in with each other to make sure that nothing is being overlooked, no one's being taken for granted, and no one's being taken advantage of. Because it's very mm -hmm. easy to get in the rhythm of doing things and overlook things and overlook people. Yeah. 
And mm-hmm. I think that when when you when you have those those separations, when you are not staying tapped in with your partner and you're not staying tapped in with God, again, when you are not your those void those voids that that happen to be there cuz there's going to be voids that that are, that that pop up. There's going to be sp- empty space that pop up. The things that you're not plugging into those spaces, the time, the consistency, the effort, the attention. Guess what? Somebody else or something else is going to come and fill those spots. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so that's where for me, like I said, conversations, I'm constantly having a conversation. I want, you know, because I'm going to tell you as a guy, do not let me be in charge by myself. Because I, I am foolish and I am, I am definitely one of those people where I have had to work on this. The Lord has had to work on me about this every day. And drinking soda every day. Don't let him be in charge. Right. Ramen right. noodles, kids, ramen, kids. Noodles, ramen. We, we eating like I was having this conversation with one of my one of my friends the other day about uh McDonald's and she's like McDonald's is so horrible I was like see that's how I know you don't have a happy life because you ain't got no happy meals in it. and so I said we eat happy meals every day over here we eat happy meals every day yeah, the little kid the little kid can't eat nothing but McDonald's come on now but see me me I being that's me being a person be charged by himself. Yeah, I need somebody to to balance off of, to check my ideas off of, to make sure that I'm not out of pocket. But that is where, like I said, that is where when we are equally yoked, I have that trust and I have that faith in my partner that if I say something, she's going to give me sound rational, you know, you know, advice and not just just let me do my own thing because that doesn't help either one of us if you're just allowing me to just lead us off a cliff. Right. But that even goes into a deeper conversation. Go ahead. I think just to even answer my own question, the value system, like your baseline has to be Mm -hmm. the same way, right? Oh, yeah. How you get to the agreed upon destination might look different for each individual, right? So I say the kid's hair needs to get done. We agree. The baby's hair got to get done. Me, I do hair. So I'm going to be the one to think, let me get in there and do it. My husband, he might, he dabbles. Uh-huh. He likes to think he can dabble. But he might say, you know what, forget it. I don't got time for this. I'm going to pay somebody to get the girl's hair done. But right. the value right. is still there. The girl's right. hair is done. Yep. Right. The block is checked. It's done. The block is checked. So I was asking that because I think sometimes people will argue, well, or, or just look at other people's relationships and say, yeah, they're unequally yoked because they have two different ways of accomplishing the same goal. Because, well, mm-hmm. they wanted to save. And he's just like, well, okay, well, to save, I'm going to work overtime. And she's just like, well, to save, I want to cut um, cut spending all together or vice versa. He's like, you need to cut some of that spending down. She's like, well, why don't you just work some overtime? I think the value is still the same of a financial goal how the value is going to be met. You got to leave a little room for an individuality and not try to stifle mm-hmm. the other person's way of doing it. Because I think sometimes people do that in the, in the, under the guise of being equally yoked. I have to like everything you like. I have to do it your way. I have well, to. Well, that's a control. That's a control issue right there, right? Well, I think people, I mean, some people give it. It's taught, right? I'm not saying like it's yeah. put down, but they teach you if your spouse likes it, you got to go and you got to support your spouse. Support could right. look like if you're into motorcycles, I mean, he's my husband. So my husband loves motorcycles, loves them. Me, on the other hand, I think they're cool. Are you Are you going to get him one for his birthday? Not yet. Well, his birthday is like, like next that. week, right? So exactly. you already purchased them. So. I'm, not, I'm not built like that. Listen, you rich. You need to stop lying. You need to stop no, lying. No, you rich. I'm not, I'm not rich. Like that. I, I'm not you buying out here balling. Motorcycle. You no, out here balling. The bike, the bike he wants, the bike he wants, I would definitely have to save up for. But to your point, even though I would never ride it, I'm not interested in getting my motorcycle license. <laughs> I tell my husband, have a grand time. Join a motorcycle club. Do you want rain gear for your bike so you could ride it in the rain? I'll even go around the neighborhood. You could take me on a ride, a joy ride on the back of your bike around the neighborhood. 
I don't need I don't need you to invest in gear because I ain't going all the time. But this I ain't going him. all the time. He said, you but you got to get a helmet. You got to get a helmet at least. I, we have uh, we have helmets, but I told, I don't want all that stuff. I ain't going that far to live. Uh, She's always driving around the block. Around the block, where if I could tuck and roll, I'm gonna roll right back to my door. Okay, <laughs> roll right back to my house. But I support but you still him. Support him, right? You're still supporting him, and I think that was a, a very good way to acknowledge that I don't have to like everything you like. Uh, I don't have to uh, be into the same exact things you're into in order to support you and love you and still show that hey. I am on the same team, regardless. I just might not do all those activities with you. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about, you know, especially in the context of being uh, evenly or equally yoked. Uh, we didn't get into it yet, but the spirituality thing, obviously that's what Paul was talking about to the Corinthians, right? Being um, with somebody who's an unbeliever or non-believer. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we use it out of context all the time, obviously, mm -hmm. but what I, I think is, um, if you two are on the same spiritual vibrations, on the same spiritual level, you should be able to uh, at least find that out from the first uh, week or two of dating. If you haven't found that out, uh, you know, that's something that either the person's hiding from you or you just haven't been listening to them. Mm -hmm. You oh, should yeah. be able to find out that in the first month of dating or first two weeks of dating. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you spiritually? Right. And, and how do you worship and, and how do you devote your time in worship? And if you don't worship, if you're agnostic, if you're atheist, how, what, you know, um, give me the context or setting of how you worship, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you, if you're having that issue with somebody, so in the beginning of the relationship, and this reminds me of a friend of mine, you know, the person truly did not uh, divulge their whole um, you know, um, conception of their spirituality. And so eventually the longer, uh, the person dated the other person, you know, they, uh, started showing a little more, more signs of, Hey, I'm more religious than I let on to be, mm -hmm. which to me, I think was a little bit of a, yeah. um, a mystery, you know, uh, I mean, you got to betray yourself as who you are. A little that was a lot. Lie. So when the person finds out, right, well, <laughs> It's like, I, I, I'm into this particular religion and this is what I do. And this is mm -hmm. how I worship. Then you have to, you're slowly trying to pull that person on board to the way you worship. Yeah, you aren't going to be evenly yoked. And that's difficult for people. Um, and, and I'm talking about a friend of mine and his wife. And uh, he didn't really let on and explain to her how he worshiped um, and, and what he worshiped until it was a little bit too late and so, she does not worship the same way so time out time out time out time out time out what it what it sounds what it sounds like you just said to me was that mm -hmm. he he committed what is called a lie by omission it's right. not but it to his credit though it's not his fault she didn't ask the right questions exactly so i mean for me <laughs> with being with, but well, i mean but my thing is this right here so how but, he didn't divulge how serious he was until a little bit later into the relationship but, but when, when you're when you're dating somebody like truly uh -huh. dating somebody not just right. you're cute i'm cute we gonna we gonna we gonna make we gonna make the beast of two backs Mm -hmm. You know, I but when you say that, <laughs> <laughs> but, just, um, say that. <laughs> like two cavemen in there, two animals. Oh, healthy. But <laughs> <laughs> healthy. I don't even want to mess with you. But but when you but when you are truly when you are truly dating somebody and you're getting to know them and you're sitting down talking talking with someone, not talking at right. them, even exchange right. of ideas and 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 goals and ambitions and and dreams. Like when you're sitting down, truly getting to know somebody, you 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 find all that stuff out. There's no way that you go through this whole process of courtship and then marriage and then surprise, I worship a different way than you worship. Because then mm -hmm. at that point, like I said, I blame the other person because you ain't asked no questions. Right. Well, well, both parties ought to be to blame. The issue is, I think why you didn't bring he was it up. Just going... Well, I think he thought she was going to fall in line. But she didn't. She she played like she was in the beginning. 
she went to the, the particular type of church with him you know a couple what? of times. I, like and... I, know, I know what this is, and I'm just not going to let my mind go there, but she knew what was up. I think sometimes we operate under the expectation that people are going to... That we can to... change other people. Yeah, we can change people. And when you do that, you find yourself in a world of mess. Um, and I know that right. to be true because I called off my first proposal, my first engagement because of that. I had communicated what my values were and what my standards were, my expectations. The person said they agreed and to only later come back and say, oh, I'm not doing any of that. And I said, well, I guess we're not getting married. And they were perplexed. Well, why wouldn't we get married? Because I, I explained to you what the expectation was. From the jump. Right. So when that changed, our my agreement to go forward changed. I'm not willing to exist mm-hmm. with you in that space where we're going in two separate directions. I'm just not. Yeah. Right. And the person well, did not. And it was, in, it was in, about worship. It was about our places of worship. And I was just like, no, I'm not willing to do that. Now, did he give did he give it a chance? Like I said, this other lady, she gave it a chance for a little bit. She even went and studied with these people, but oh, yeah, she refused baptized. to convert. He got baptized. Oh, wow. No, did he get baptized? Oh. I think he did. Yeah, I think he got baptized and was like, I'm did he do still it. refuse? Well, no, yeah. no. So what happened was this right here. So what happened? This is what happened. Oh, so what happened you know what was, happened? you know, unique you. Unique put that thing on him, right? She put that ah, thing on him, <laughs> and then he, she yeah. put that thing on him. And, but, but, <laughs> and my man, my man was delivered. Want to marry he me. was, he, he was delivered. <laughs> he was delivered, and he was ready. Okay, he, was, could... he, he was, he was full of the Holy Spirit. Right. Ah, I worship how you worship. Yeah, like, Ruth, God is my God. My man said, "My name is Ruth from here on out." <laughs> right now, right. <laughs> I'm ready to go follow wherever you go. But you know nah, what? We, but really... no, no, no. Ser- in all seriousness, though, because our wedding was in June, we I called off my wedding in April. So I mean, he might not Ooh. be lying. He might not be lying. I think it got serious. Like, oh. This is about to be real, yeah. And I'm like, not we together, we, down. we 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 together forever now. Like, what? And so when he had to realize that I was not kidding about, like, I don't know what the heck he thought I was doing. That joke was in love and in la la land, and I was just like, right, that's crazy. It is what it is. I, I'm not. I didn't sugarcoat. This is who I am. This is what I believe. And either you go this way, or we're done. And that's see, ultimately how we did that Yeah. But but see, it also it also brings in the question like the vows of marriage, right? Like mm-hmm. the vows of marriage for better or for worse, for richer richer or poor, for sickness and in health. Like when you are equally yoked, you have to take those vows into account. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's you know, marriage is serious. And that's where, like, for me, mm-hmm. that's why, you know, your boy ain't married because, you know, I stand on what I, on what I said. So when it comes, when it comes down to it, anything that I put my name to, especially if I'm taking vows in front of God, I'm taking vows in front of my family. I mean that. And so, mm-hmm. you know, when, when, when we are, when we are operating in a space of being equally yoked, it hits different when you got to stand on what you said you were going to do. Yep. Right. Versus just, I said it, but I, re- I really didn't mean it. You know, like, yep. like Unique's old boyfriend, you know, he said it after she put that thing on him. He said it, but he really wasn't, he really did mean it. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, it was, well. It was an emotional response. It, it I was, a, it was I said well, too. he, well, it, it was a response that he, that he moved. It was, it was a response of his flesh. Yes. It was a response of so, his flesh, not of his, his not of his weak, spirit. Flesh is weak. <laughs> yep. Y'all won't believe it. <laughs> that flesh <laughs> He's walking down the aisle. Next thing you know, but, but you got to think about it, right? Uh, you stood for your convictions, right? And yeah, so, as yeah. I said, my friend was standing for his convictions. She stood on business. Expecting, yeah, he was expecting her to move in a certain way. When she didn't do it, uh, what they've been going through is a lot of problems. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm starting to see, well, 
if if she doesn't respect these certain beliefs or and 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 the way he believes is is a completely different way than she does she accepts certain things but not all of them so they've been having a lot of trouble right and that's unevenly yoked because mm-hmm. they're not going in the same direction cognitive dissonance the oxen yeah the oxen and, and they're not going the same direction they're not plowing forward together so uh they've been going through a lot of this for a while and they've been trying to work it out but my problem is for those who are listening um if you haven't talked to your 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 partner your spouse your 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 girlfriend or loved one whoever it is you haven't talked to them about how you worship and 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 what type of how your worship is going to look and how it's going to evolve over the years what you you know because some people want to do service work with their church or particular religion or denomination they want to be out there they want to be there every saturday or sunday they want to um you know do door-to-door stuff they want to preach the gospel there's people who take this serious Mm -hmm. so when you get with someone who doesn't have those same spiritual values and you have these expectations on these people and then they don't meet them all of a sudden we're unevenly yoked but that's not how i look at it i look at it as all right you knew before you got in there what you wanted and you didn't tell that person well, what you want? Well, the flags and the signs were there. Like right. and we talked oh, yeah. about this in the episode that we had about red flags. You you seen all the the flags going going in that direction, but you chose to overlook the warning signs because you were blinded <laughs> by other things. Yes. And that's where, like, for a lot of people, regardless of its spirituality, finances, education, raising children. You know, when it comes to being equally yoked, when you, it starts off with how you started the relationship, how you started the relationship is going to have a direct correlation to how the relationship progresses and how it ultimately ends. So if you started it off with the right foundation, the right structure, guess what? You can build upon that. You're going to have a solid house. But when you started off on some baby back bullshit, you're going to have a house that the big bad wolf is going to come by and blow that bitch right on over. It's it's built by with straw. (laughs) <laughs> or hey and 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 that's what happens and so when when you are when you have the proper foundation the proper structure there is nothing that is going to come up in your relationship that you guys collectively and collaboratively cannot overcome and not take on together but yeah. when you guys are like i said you started off your relationship incorrectly you know you're fine i'm fine we look good together you cute i'm cute let's lay up together and you don't have the proper foundation, the proper frame of the house, it doesn't take much for things to come by, distractions, um, turmoil, chaos, and your whole house is falling over, or now it's crooked, or now it's just, it it has to be condemned. And that's where, Mm -hmm. for me, when we talk about being equally yoked, there is, I don't feel that there's no one way to be equally yoked. I think that, you know, like Unique said, you know, there is a whole, multitude of and and facets to being equally yoked you know but being being together and and in unison as a team is is for me i feel like the cornerstone to being equally yoked because again there should be singularly exactly Mm -hmm. together together we have to be attacking the problem together if i move you move that's how it has to be just like that you move i'm moving just like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Ludacris Chris gets a shout out. But no, <laughs> hey, hey, hey I, I completely understand what he's saying. Yeah, Moving it in gotta unison. be that way. I got it. It gotta be that way. Um, right. I was gonna say something, Mark Miller. You just all that chatter just snuck it right out of my head. Um, but I think a lot of times, right, when it comes to people just overlooking stuff right because this this couple that khalil had saying they're married they they didn't already given these vows Mm -hmm. um so where do you go from there you gotta go back to the drawing board this is how i feel Mm -hmm. this these are my expectations and so while this while the wife may not be willing to come over and convert she might have to say, all right, this this person's place of worship, if it does not offend me, it, it's not grossly offensive, I can still support my spouse in attending certain things right. or um, making sure like 
I'll use I'll use my religion. In my religion, we don't eat pork. So making sure that I don't have anything that has pork in it. I don't eat meat, period. So if you invite me somewhere and you want me to eat it's a veggie. Don't have don't have no meat there because I'm not gonna enjoy it. Roger Mel will come and have just meat though. Just That's right. spiteful. Mine. spiteful to me. I sure okay. will. I sure will. <laughs> Mine flesh. But and then I'm gonna be like, ooh, this is so delicious. Ooh, ooh, oh. And oh, I'm gonna oh. say, mm, and I, I wouldn't care because I don't think I've ever had pork. But anyway, so the wife, I would use that to say, like, the wife may be accommodating to the husband's belief system right. in a way that even if she does not attend, she's still able to be accommodated and vice versa, where the husband may not be, she may not worship with her while it is not ideal. But still being able, the Bible talks about that. Like if you are married to an unbeliever, to pray and like to pray for that unbeliever yes. and to lift them up, right? So if your spouse is an unbeliever in what you think to be along the lines of whatever your spiritual discipline is, you can still uplift them. You can still be supportive in a way that shows what is our core value here. Our value is togetherness. Our value Values, is right. a happy marriage. Or not just because I don't even really like the word happy in that sense. A healthy marriage. We want a healthy partnership. So a healthy partnership says, I'm going to attend as many of the things that I can attend without it being offensive to me. I'm going to give as much mm-hmm. as I can, even right. if that given says, I'm going to make sure my loved one has gas to make it to their house of worship. Because some people like fundamentally mm-hmm. they might not agree, but I'm going to make sure my spouse has what they need to get to this to this place of worship. They may wear certain clothing. I'm going to make sure mm-hmm. my spouse has this clothing, right? If, if your spouse may be Muslim, right, or Jewish, I'm going to make mm-hmm. sure they have the right headgear. When they enter into that place of worship, they're going to be dressed apart. She's going to have the best outfit out there. Right. You know, if she's a Muslim woman, she's going to be the, she gonna have a, the best hijab that money can buy. We'll be like, dang, that hijab is hijab, girl. Right. Yeah. Heck yeah. And the husband might never set foot in that mosque, but her hijab gonna be hijabing. If the husband is Jewish, the, the little yarmulke thing, right? It's gonna be how little, you know, it's gonna be the velvet one, the nice. nice one. It's gonna mm-hmm. fit. The, it's gonna never gonna be snapped to the head, okay? With a little, with a little thing in the back. And I'm like, yo, that's that that yarmulke. Ooh. Where she? It's custom. You can't find this at the Jewish shop. Custom you got to order this one. Right, it's custom fitted. If I take it off, it won't fit you. But that's still showing support. And that wife might never come to the Lord. synagogue. But when it comes time for, for Hanukkah, oh, I got, I bought my husband the best candles. When the family comes over to celebrate Hanukkah, right. I'm Menorah's not going up. upstairs. Everything. Menorah's yeah. up. I didn't put the menorah up and I got the Christmas tree up. Okay? I got them up home. I got them up home right. up there. But it shows solidarity. It shows I'm invested in my partner. And I think that a partner enjoys that. And it gives it 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 softens the blow of my partner not being there. Right. Mm-hmm. I've had those right. conversations right. with my husband. Now we are the same religion. We we are on the same values and we have the same ideals. But I come from a different worship experience than he does. And so I've talked mm-hmm. to him about sometimes wanting to do things that were more aligned with me. My churches that I've attended were more community service focused, where they were outreach driven. The church right, they're out the in the public that, and doing right, things. Right, right. The body that we're in this more casual dress. The body that we're with now, they are not like that. It's more family and inward focused, which is not a bad thing. It's just different. And mm-hmm. I asked how would you feel if I found a church that was more aligned to what I'm used to? And he said, while it would be difficult, I understand and respect that you got to do what's best for you spiritually. Just what would that look like for Mm -hmm. our family? Would you ever worship with us? And I said, yeah, there would be times when I would worship with you guys. But that's something I wanted to have that conversation with him to just see, because when we got together, we, we talked about going to the same church. That was never a conversation. So people were like, well, you can't grow. But as I'm growing in my spiritual walk and I'm realizing my spiritual needs, 
it's a little it looks a little different from how you how it did when we first got married and i think there's room for that growth room for us to be able to have like we said that conversation about what am i wants and need and making space for it to change right so like unique makes it sound so inviting to uh try to work <laughs> this out with your spouse because it she's is. a therapist right now, what, it is. you, it, you know it. what i'm saying you RJ, it. you guys look listen you guys always do that y'all make things so easily and, and it just looks like oh so everything's just gonna flow when i bring up this conversation so we just gotta have communication and both of you two make it so easy because y'all are licensed professionals right um, but I always, you Don't know you me, I always want to keep that to us, Khalil. Don't always want to keep it real because look, 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 you know why? And look, for those who are listening, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm about to get my license, Lord willing. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. I got a license, but I'm trying to get that coat. independent professional joint. And that's when he's I'm not on a level like us. Listen, I'm, <laughs> I, and I, I'm not because I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it real. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm fresh out the trenches right now. Like I'm about to keep it real. So. When somebody is unequally yoked with me spiritually, right? And I'm having this problem and I'm having all these issues with this person and they don't want the kids to worship a certain way and they not inviting them. You know what I'm saying? Let's say I worship on Saturday. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go, um, you know, on Sabbath. I'm trying to shut things down Friday night and they upset. They're like, yo, I'm cranking my music. That type of stuff does. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it, and it's very contentious, right? And and the contention will, will drive people apart. Mm -hmm. And so if you are out there listening and you have stepped in to a relationship and you two aren't on the same spiritual plane, I believe at that point that you're going to have to make some good decisions. Either you're going to go to a marriage counselor like those licensed professionals right there that you hear and help you, all right? Uh, uh, and help you be able to communicate with your partner how this is making you feel, what this is doing to you mentally, the cognitive dissonance, right? All those things that are happening right there, that mental discomfort, either you get a professional or you make a good decision because either you're going to have to uh, play by the rules, meaning that, hey, you're going to have to accept that person for who they are and try to make it work to the best of your ability, or you're going to have to leave. And those are the or, rough decisions. Or people you're gonna have, have to, to hold that person accountable. Like let's let's not, right? I talked about it all nice and in my cute therapist voice. But when the rubber <laughs> meets the road, you won't have to hold these adults accountable. Yo, you signed up for they this. They are adults. They're you adults. signed up for this, and when you yeah. signed up for this, you don't get to just be a bully in the situation. And no, I'm not leaving. I don't right. disrespect you. Don't be disrespectful to me. And if you're disrespectful, you're going to suffer the consequences. When you turn your music up, then me and my kids, we just won't go somewhere else. Because if you're being disrespectful, I don't have to stand here and take disrespect. Because you're being honored. And I'm about to call there your you mama go. and let her know she, oh did, she didn't raise the, Not the mama. Not the mama. Hey, look, look. I'm calling oh, your okay. mama. Hey, now look, I but, knew I was going to bring this out of her. You but, see but what see, I do. Maryland but, represent. But see, not even I was going to get it. Not, not even just oh, that. See, that like, she, uh, see we, real. Were, we were thinking the same thing. Yeah. Like she just, she, she just bubbled up, you know, to the surface before I did. I mean, like to me, I, <laughs> I, I put, I put a, I, I'm a big person about accountability. And a lot of times, like we find ourselves in these situations, we got to stop and ask ourselves how we get here. Right. Right. How did we get how here? You, you know, because right. sometimes for us as, 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 as grown adults, as grown adults doing adulting out here in this world, this big, crazy world, we tend to make decisions and not fully think first, second, third order effects. So mm -hmm. when you, when, and this is where I go back to, establishing the foundation for the relationship because how you started the relationship is going to dictate how it proceeds and how it goes. When you are not starting the relationship off, honestly, you're not starting the conversation, the, the relationship off with honest conversations and you're not having deep conversations past right. surface level stuff past. What is your favorite color? What is your sign? You know, when is your birthday? But we're having deep conversations. Like where do you see yourself in five years? What is your right. credit score? What is your religious preference? How do you How worship? Do you, 
Like how do you, you accept no? Like what, when someone tells you no, how do you deal with that? How do how you, do you deal feel about with... kids? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like that, when you're not having you those deep conversations. How do you, how do you navigate that's what I'm conflict? Saying, like, because conflict is real. Conflict is neither good or bad. How do you navigate conflict yeah, right. when you when how do you handle disappointment? Because I'm going to disappoint it, you. As long as exactly. I'm alive, I'm gonna do something and There's I'm gonna, gonna drop the bag yes. and I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna drop it miserably. Okay. How are you gonna deal with that? Are you going to shame me out? Or are mm-hmm. you going to come as a team and figure out how do we get it back? How do we stabilize after we our ship has just been rocked? Mm-hmm. How do we come back from this? How do we right. come back from this? Are we coming back fighting together? Or are we coming back fighting each other? Because if we're coming back fighting each other, I, I'm not doing it. Just count me out. We just can end this today. But, but, I don't want it. But, but not having those deep <laughs> conversations is what sets yes. you up for the disappointment later. Yeah. And I think right. that for a lot of us, when it comes to being equally yoked, period, the conversations have to start at the very beginning because mm-hmm. all these people who, oh, I'm surprised and I didn't know you are an idiot. Right. I'm being honest with you. You are an idiot. You were, you were, you were distracted by the razzle dazzle and the cute smile. Mm-hmm. You could have manipulated. Yeah. You know, and, and, and no, the no, person, they were smooth. A woman. I told you a bunch of elbows. They got they got led by that elbow. One too many. They got, they got led by the elbow. Yeah. You, yeah. Got, elbow. you that, got you that got grip led, was, the grip you got good. led by the elbow, or, or you were distracted by some by some by by a shapely shape. And I mean, at the end of the day, again, there has to be more to whatever your relationship is than the external things, the surface right. level things. I think too, looking looking one one degree left or right will tell you a lot about a person. And by that, I mean looking at their influ- the, their circles of influence, their family, their yep. friends. Yep. Because a person going to tell yes. you a lot of things. And it's going to sound amazing. But when you step one degree left or right, how does this person interact with their family? How does this person mm-hmm. interact with their social group? How does this person interact in their professional group? It's going to show you a lot more about that person listening to the conversations they have with other people. Yeah, I hear the conversations you have with me, but that starts to be a little different from what I'm hearing over there. Yeah. When and I, I want to know who the real you is. And, unless yeah. you're this guy. Unless you're this guy. I, well, you're this I'm guy. Say, I, I'm this that guy, person. I'm the same way all the time. I had a lady and her husband come all up the to time. me. All the time. Ownery. All the yeah, time. Ornery. I'm, too, I, I'm too lazy to be anything else. I'm too lazy to be anything else. I'm the same way all the time. How you know, how I am with everybody else is how I'm going to be with you. Just real. But I think that's important. I had a couple from church to see me at the airport. And if you met me, right, I may not be loud in volume, but in personality. She's she's loud in presence. Yeah, I'm deafening. Okay, she, I'm deafening sometimes. She de- you blow your eardrums out. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna leave a hole in there. And you so might not church, you might not even be able to see. At church, I am the same. Okay, I'm a free praiser. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a I'm friendly. I'm gregarious. And so the people met me at the airport, and they were like, "Wow, you're the same." Yeah. I said, "You huh? didn't switch up on me." I There's said, no huh? switch up thing. What do you mean? I said, yeah, I, uh, yeah. They're like, no, because some people outside of church, they're so different than who they are. It's just unrecognizable. I was the same, friendly, warm. and I will hug. If if you're my friend and I meet your mama, hey, ma, and I'm bringing her into an embrace. Like, whoa, whoa wait. She, she's, she's wait, in a, wait, wait. Did your friend hug me? Yeah. You're, unique, is a, unique is aggressively affectionate. I'm going to sit at your mama's table. I'm going to chat with her like I'd have known her, her whole, not, not your whole life, her whole life. Yes. Right. And, but that's just how I am. So when people. Never when met a stranger. Me, never. Even, I told y'all I was the one who my mother was worried about was going to get kidnapped. And not because somebody took me because I went with them. <laughs> we were, I thought I knew them. Just hang out with folks. <laughs> Hanging with random I people. Her, I know them. I know them. And she would say, "You don't know them people, girl." I do. <laughs> we we I, had a whole conversation. I, I didn't talk to them about their credit score. Well, what is it? And I would know it. 
And so, but I say all of that to say, when you step out a, a degree or two outside of my life, like when you talk to Raja, it's not, okay, so I'm going to put it like this. When Khalil first met me, he got to see a persona, but it lined up with who Raja knew. It wasn't like, Raja's mm-hmm. like, yo, you acting real different on this podcast. He was able to confirm stories from 15 years ago. She's, um, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, that's her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's her. She's going to be that, though. You ain't got to worry. 10 years from now, she's still going to be that. She may, she may <laughs> grow. She may wise up. She might become more elevated in her in her being of her. But she going to be her. And I think in a marriage, if you are seeing those discrepancies where the person is one way with you, but they're a little different, different over here, families. they're a little different over there, you got to ask, am, do I have the capacity to deal with a chameleon? Mm. Woo. I I ain't Ooh, no I, I'm no reptile I'm no reptile trainer, right? Okay, I'm not I'm not a zookeeper, and I'm not a chameleon wrangler, so that would not be my capacity. I can't I can't manage something that is uncontrollable. I don't know what you want. You want to be green today, blue tomorrow, turquoise the next day. I, 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 I need you to be one thing. A python always going to be a python. A cougar right. always going to be a cougar. A lion always going to be a lion. And you know your limits with them things. But you got to learn the lit. Oh, all right. Now, that's not to say a lion might act a little cuddly around his woman versus when he's around prey. They act a little different. But he still has lion characteristics no matter where he's at. No matter where he's at. I'm still not trusting the lion. I'm good. How did we get on this topic, folks? I don't because know. I don't know. Because I'm going to tell you because why. Because we're telling people what not to do. We got there because you got to know your capacity, right? And boy, they didn't know their capacity. They thought these lions right. are our babies. They're our kittens. And they weren't. They were tigers. And so when they bit their heads off like tigers, they were not too. domesticated animals. Are you saying Jeez. they were not domesticated animals? They weren't when, the normal when house they, cat. When they operated in the element of who they are, then the owners were surprised. Just like people, when we expect people to operate in the confines that we right. get to them, then yes. when we get our heads bit off, we can't be surprised because they were a tiger. They were always a tiger. Mm-hmm. They were never right. anything else. You just didn't yeah. want to accept them for being a tiger. And so when we're not equally yoked, that's what happens. We operate in a space of mystical fairy tales and whimsical wishes of what we would like mm-hmm. for this person to be and not accept them for, them true, for their true selves. And that doesn't make them good or bad. It just makes them them. And maybe not compatible mm-hmm. for you. Wow. Yeah. Now that that summed it up. Came in there. I like that. I like that one right there. That just made that, them who they are. <laughs> that was my license. That was my license coming through. It, it came back. So we got real ratchet for a minute. We got real ratchet. I love it. That's what I wanted to see, though. I, I wanted to see that so I can understand it. You know, all that therapeutic stuff goes over my mind. I'm a social worker sometimes. I'm like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Bring me back down to go. earth. Here you go with this. <laughs> See, you Bring must me back make, down to earth. You, you must, you, you must make me call you out your name. We almost made me call you out your name. We're not going to battle the letters behind our names, okay? Listen, I'm there. just saying. We go there. We're not going to battle. No, it's not going to be a battle for <laughs> licenses. Because we are, we'll knock you out, Khalil. Listen, I just wanted y'all to bring it down to earth for me. Bring it down to earth. Put it in I'm a, back. A case I man- understand everything you want it in, now. in a case management bite size? Yes, in a low? bite size. You know what's so funny? That, that the case <laughs> management might be a little too low. But listen, you know what was funny about it, though? What was funny is I understood because I think we all do that. You get what I'm saying? That's that's a concept that I can understand because, hey, if I'm trying to train this person into being something they're not, and then when they show me that they're not, that was my fault. Mm-hmm. And I got to look at what I was trying to, uh, uh, what, I, what I was trying to put them in this box or peg them for this. Or like you said, it was kind of magical thinking. 
No, they didn't. I knew what they were. Mm-hmm. And I tried to change somebody. We tried to make them into that's something not right. that they yeah. weren't. Yeah. yeah, that's not right. And, yeah, and, and I'm good. Shift, shift I, that, that analogy worked with me. So we well, are going I'm... to end the conversation there. This is Try Not to Overthink It signing out. I'm RJ. I'm your wonderful host, Unique. All right, I'm Khalil. <laughs> if you, if, 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 you, if you like what you heard and like what you saw, uh, please stop by the YouTube channel. We can be found on YouTube. It's Try Not to Overthink It. We drop content weekly. So if you stop by the channel, please like, share, subscribe, turn your notifications on so that you don't miss out on any, any of the content. If you would prefer to listen to us instead of watch us, uh, we can be found everywhere that you can find your podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Audible, pretty much anywhere you can find the audio file, Brilliant. you can be found. So we will catch you next time. Peace. Thank you.